Um, right, hi everyone. My name's uh, Nick Tusi. Um, I'm from the EBI in Cambridge. I'm going to talk about identifiers.org for practical integration of uh, heterogeneous data. So um, I'm aware that many of the people here won't know anything about identifiers.org. So I'll start off with an introduction about identifiers.org and uh, the underlying information that's stored in their registry. Uh, I'll talk about the current status, which is some of the things we're doing recently. And um, I should put really near future plans. This is the things that we're planning to do next. Um, and then I'll also show you how you can contribute to our efforts. So, uh, first of all, the objective of identifiers.org is to provide a multi purpose cross referencing and integration system. Um, I'll put here community driven um, because we're driven by the needs of the communities that we serve. And originally we started off requiring a cross referencing and uh, annotations system for um, systems biology models. Um, as we developed that scheme, we realised that because of the common traits, we were also able to provide that as an integration system. So what we do is we provide um, location-independent URIs. Um, and because they're location-independent, it makes them stable. And we also, within those URIs, provide information on where you can actually map to the, the data behind it. Uh, already mentioned community driven. Um, the, this is uh, an open su submission system so that anyone's free to um, uh, ask to have information added to it to provide URIs that they might want to use. It's also free to use in terms of academic and commercial uh, institutions, so it's completely open. Um, and what we end up with, with is a curated registry, and it's curated because we maintain the accuracy and consistency of the information that we store. Um, so what we have is a registry which is basically a catalogue of, collect of data collections. And by data collections, um, we mean things, uh, sets or pools of data uh, uh, generated by a data provider with a particular perspective on the data. Um, one good example would be something like PDB, um, which is data about proteins but from a structural perspective. Uh, PubMed is also another data collection. Um, so uh, we, we have, um, this, you can access the information by browsing or searching, and if you go to the browser page, you get the listing of the data collection and also the namespaces that we assign to those data collections. Um, currently, we have something like uh, 400, 400 plus data collections in the registry and with a number of others that are scheduled for releasing from our curation pipeline. And some of those I'm sure I'll be releasing over the course of this by hackathon. Um, we populate our registry from a number of different sources. So there's uh, various public lists. So some resources like Gene Ontology and Uniprop provide um, cross-reference lists for the, for the sources that they reference. And there's also the NAR database issue where we draw some uh, um, collections from, and also other registries such as LSRN, which we worked on previously with Mark Wilkinson, and bio to rdf which we're working on currently with the Show of the We also get requests from groups, so uh, a group that, for example, wants to have their own uh, data available through identifiers.org URIs will submit a request, or in fact for the tools, or for the, the databases they cross-reference themselves and they may want to give us a whole list of those that we added to identifiers.org and also from user submissions. Uh, so if somebody sees something that they want to produce at identifiers.org or I for, they submit a request to us and we add it. So this is the kind of information we store in a collection. This is uh, Enzyme Inventature. Uh, the first thing you notice is that we give each of the collections uh, an identifier within our registry. We also store synonym information, a brief description, and a regular expression pattern that defines the, uh, the identifier for records within that collection. So we have the namespace, and then we also provide um, the resources, so that's the resolving locations for where you can retrieve that information. Uh, each of those has its own identifier, we store the access URL and some other related information. Um, so the, the thing to uh, note here is that um, we decouple the data, which is so the identifier, from the resolving location. So we view the data collection as uh, location independent. So something like the taxonomy uh, data collection uh, exists independently of where you resolve the actual information from. So the records within taxonomy are also location independent, and then you have resources where you can get instances of that information. 
Um, so moving on to identifiers.org, this is um, a layer that was built on top of the um, registry to allow generation of resolvable URIs. And what happens is, because there's a number of locations where you get the information, it resolves from an intermediate page, which I'll come to in a second. So I've got a couple of examples here. So alcohol dehydrogenase, um, which has EC number 1.1.1 in the enzyme nomenclature data collection, um, has a URI here. So we have the identifiers that all stem. We have the namespace as, it's, as recorded in the registry for that collection, and the identifier from the data set. So uh, one other thing to note is that we store uh, information about the data collection and we store information about the resource where you can get the information. We don't actually store the data itself, so we don't have in the registry information for that particular entry. Uh, there's another example there, but that's the main URL and you can find the registry linked from there as well. And uh, this is our most recent publication to find out how the registry and identifiers that all interact um, so this is about the intermediate um, page that we have. So regardless of whether you want HTML or RDF, which you can reach through content negotiation, what you end up with is an intermediate page. So in the HTML page version, you have links, hyperlinks to each of the places where you can get that information directly in that page. Um, if you look at the RDF, I've got some snippets here. I don't actually expect you to read it. Uh, the first section is to show that we have um, information on the identifier, so in this case 1.1.1. Uh, we also have information on those um, physical resources where you can resolve the information, including the access URL, the type of format of information you can get back. Um, this part here is about the collection, so um, provides the identifier and the synonym information. And this bottom part here, um, which hopefully you can see, um, the bottom part provides information about the resolving layer, so that's identifies to all. Uh, moving on to current developments, um, some of you may have noticed that there's been a site-wide redesign of the EBI resources. So um, during the course of that redesign, we, we took an opportunity to simplify the interface we have for the registry. Um, hopefully that makes the information more accessible to our users. Um, we'd welcome some feedback on that if anyone actually uses it here. Um, and the other news is, uh, up till now, the development work on identifiers.org Identifiers.org has been done piecemeal, um, taking parts from various larger grants. Um, but we now have a BB, BBSRC dedicated uh, position for development of Identifiers.org, and that will be starting this summer, so anytime now. Um, now we'll move on to what our plans are um, in the immediate future. And the first is on the integral version of URIs. So at the moment, um, as I showed you, we have resources where we store uh, resolving locations. And what happens currently is, because we want to keep those current, we want to have the most accurate live URL that retrieves information. Um, as we update those, because they change sometimes quite often, um, we lose the previous um, legacy URL. So one thing we want to do is be able to store those. Um, and the other thing we want to do is, uh, because different people using different identification schemes. We want to choose to uh, store also alternative URI forms. <clears throat> so once we have that, we can provide a capability to transition or move across different access URLs and move across different identification schemes. And of course, do the remote <coughs> thing as well. Um, following on directly from that point, um, since different providers do use different URIs, and a good example would be um, over at Library Pearls, um, they use those in their public facing triple stores. What we want to do is to interrelate those URIs, uh, regardless of where they came from, within a federated Spark query. So, one of our main objectives is to provide a Spark compatible endpoint for the information we store. Um, the third thing was about format availability. So, um, the, the links I showed you to, from the resources go to HTML, but also different data, data providers provide other formats of data, for example, RDF and JSON. But you can also think of a more niche kind of formats that might be required by other users, such as FASTA or, for example, image files and so on. Um, and those will often have different uh, URLs. Um, and they'll be formulated slightly differently. We don't actually capture that information at the moment. 
So what we want to do is at the level of the resources that we have, uh, start storing information about different formats that are available from a particular resource. Um, and be able to access those independently. So we have different systems to access information, so you don't always have to go through, through the resolving um, intermediate page. So those are profiles, parameters, I'm not really going to talk about those too much in contact negotiation, but the information on those is uh, in the paper as well. Uh, the next thing is that over time, with increased use of, use of identifiers.org, it means that we've got more information to capture. So that's not just data collections that we already have in the registry, that also includes the additional information that we want to add to the collections that are already there. So it's quite a lot of curation work and it's quite a lot of development work. And so from the, on the curation side, we like to move towards a more community collaborative kind of means of dealing with all this uh, amount of data that we have to process. Um, so one of the things that we'd like to do is involve data providers. Um, so we'd like to take data, get data providers to take ownership of the record of their record within the registry. And of course nobody would know better than the provider themselves whether their access URL is going to change or whether they're going to start providing a new format or provide the data in a new format. So um, that would be ideal to actually maintain their own entry as well. Uh, initially we, we envisaged that a curator would have to moderate the information that gets added um, by these data providers, but as time goes on and uh, we're comfortable with some sort of reaching a standard level of consistency between the different records that we have in the registry. Um, that curator could, uh, that data provider could actually eventually act independently. So this requires a lot of changes as well. It requires some updated software and infrastructure, user interface. Um, we need to add some way of dealing with accounts and uh, permissions for those. And we need to provide some training for those uh, providers. But hopefully that can address some of our um, future needs. Um, so how to contribute. Um, we're always looking for new ideas on how we can serve, serve the community. So if you have any ideas for any services you'd like to see added, uh, you can visit, uh, you can uh, uh, submit a message to this mailing list. Um, there. Um, also, if you see any um, data collections you'd like to see added to our registry to be available through identifiers.org or any modifications that you'd suggest for existing entries. Um, we have a tracker on SourceForge um, and we appreciate your support and um, thank you very much for the invitation. I'll just end with this slide here. We're governed by a board of trustees. I've highlighted in blue uh, the people that are here. I don't think any of the others here. But um, hopefully I can tell you a little bit more about it if you need to. This is the team, a lot of the work's done by Kenny. And these are the two uh, guys that are in charge of the project, Nicola Lenegaia and Henny. Um, and that's me, my contact email address if you want to contact me that way. And that's it.